the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you are welcome to this third day of the Great Feast Conference. Your conference here, Great Feast. And the theme of this conference is Turn Around by God into a Wonder. God can turn your life around into a wonder. But what must I do in order to commit God to turn my life around into a wonder? We saw that you need serious prayers in order to turn your situations around. All the promises of God need to be enforced for them to be manifested in your life. All the blessings of God, all the promises of God, they need to be enforced for them to be manifested in your life. For any evil to be averted in your life, you need to engage serious prayers. And serious prayers are accompanied with fasting and with warfare. So a combination of fasting, prayer, and warfare is what is connoted as serious prayers. You need serious prayers to turn your situations around. Prayer without fasting cannot be connoted as a serious prayer. Warfare without fasting cannot be connoted as serious prayer. There are weighty situations in your life that cannot be turned around by casual prayers. There are serious situations in your life that cannot be turned around by light prayers. A serious matter requires a serious approach. A weighty matter requires a serious approach. And we saw from the scriptures all those that faced weighty matters, serious matters, they engaged in fasting, in prayer, in prayer, in warfare to turn situations around. And today, Leo, I want us to look at praying in tongues to turn your situations around. Praying in tongues to turn your situations around. Tongues and the initial evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Tongues is the initial evidence of the baptism in the Holy Ghost. It is the initial evidence that somebody has received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Tongues Ndimi. is the evidence of the baptism Wapatizo. of the Holy Ghost. It is the initial evidence to show that a believer has been baptized Amepatizo. with the Holy Ghost. And Jesus says, tongue speaking is one of the signs that should follow all believers. Tongue speaking is one of the five signs that shall follow all the believers. In Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, from verse 17. So tongue speaking. At the initial evidence. 
of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. It is the initial evidence that somebody has received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In Mark 16, 17, Jesus says, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. They shall speak Wataongea. with new tongues. Mpia. They shall speak Wataongea. with new tongues. Kwa luga mpia. These signs Shara-izi. shall follow them that believe. Waminiyo. So tongue speaking is one of the five signs that should follow believers. Ambaya five Tongue speaking is one of the five signs that should follow all believers. In Acts chapter 2, when the apostles were baptized with the Holy Ghost, the evidence of the baptism in the Holy Ghost was speaking in tongues. Acts chapter 2 verses 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And they appeared unto them, clothing tongues like as of fire. And they sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Verses 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They were all baptized with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit of God Give them utterance. So tongue speaking is the evidence that a believer has been baptized with the Holy Ghost. How do we know you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit? You must speak in tongues. So tongue speaking is one of the signs that should follow all believers, not some believers, not most believers, all believers. So God wants every believer to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And God wants every believer to speak in tongues. So if you are baptized with the Holy Ghost, the proof and the evidence that you have been baptized with the Holy Spirit is to speak with tongues. Acts chapter 9. Matendo ya mitu umetisa. Acts chapter 9. Matendo ya mitu umetisa. How do we know Tuajuaji. that Paul was baptized with the Holy Spirit? Alipatizo katika Romu takatifu. Acts chapter 9. Matendo ya mitu umetisa. Verses 10 to 12. Kumi hadi kumi na mbili. Acts 9, 10 to 12. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision. Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go to the street which is called Street, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayed, and I have seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive a sight. Verse 17. 
And Ananias went his way. And turned into the house. Putting his hands on him saying. Brother Saul. The Lord even Jesus. That appeared on today. In the way. As thou camest. Has sent me. That thou might receive. Thy sight. And be filled. With the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. You cannot become great in the kingdom of God without being baptized with the Holy Ghost. You cannot fulfill your destiny in God without being baptized in the Holy Ghost. You can never attain that which God has prepared for you until you are baptized with the Holy Ghost. And be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately, there fell from his eyes as he had been scaled and received sight for tweet and arose and was baptized. How do we know Paul was baptized with the Holy Ghost? First Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians 14. In verses number 18. 1, 2, 3, let's read. 1 Corinthians 14, 18. I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than ye all. I thank my God. I speak with tongues more than ye all. When did Paul began to speak in tongues? When he was filled with the Holy Ghost. When he was baptized with the Holy Ghost. Another example. Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10. Verses 44. Acts 10, 44. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter. Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they had them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answer Peter. How did they know that they received the gift of the Holy Ghost? How did they know that this, this Gentiles have been baptized with the Holy Ghost? The answer is in verses 46. For they had them speak with tongues and magnify God. So, tongue speaking is the evidence of the baptism with the Holy Ghost. When you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, then you are anointed. Your tongue is anointed to speak a new tongue. So, tongue speaking is the evidence of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lastly, example. Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. Verses 1 to 6. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and found a certain disciple. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? That means when you believe, you need to receive the Holy Ghost. When you believe, you need to be baptized with the Holy Ghost in order to enjoy God's best. 
and said unto them, Oliza, Have you received the Holy Ghost since takati, you became believers? Waminio, and they said unto him, we have not so much as had sikia, whether there be any Holy Ghost. Kuna rom and he said unto them, Akawamia, Unto what day were ye baptized? And gani. he said unto John's kwa, baptism. Kwa wa Yohana, that is water baptism. Wa and Jesus and said Paul, Paul akasema, then said Paul, John verily Johanna, baptized with the baptism of repentance alipatiza, upatiza, watoba, saying unto the people watu, that they shall believe on him ye, we shall come after him that is on Christ Jesus yani Yesu Christo, when they had this hayo, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus kwa jina la and Yesu. when Paul na Paulo, it laid his hands upon them the yake, Holy Ghost rom takatifu, came on them and yao, they spoke with tongues and prophecy the Holy Ghost Rome takatifu, came on them and yao. they spoke with tongues and nimi, prophesied. Na pia. So, tongue speaking nimi, is the evidence that you have been filled with the Holy Ghost. Na Rome tongue speaking nimi, is the evidence that you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Up to here. And yapo, Let's look at the important points. Mambo ya muhimu. Number one. Kwanza, tongue speaking ndimi, is the evidence ni of Holy Ghost baptism. Wa tongue speaking ndimi, is the evidence ni of Holy Ghost baptism. He could not pray for anybody. He could not cast out any demons until the day he was baptized with the Holy Ghost. 
And he told his disciples, don't go anywhere. Don't go to preach. It's dangerous. Stay here until you endure with power to show you every believer that will fulfill his destiny in God must be baptized with the Holy Ghost. What are the benefits of speaking in tongues? What are the benefits of speaking in tongues? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Benefits of praying and speaking in tongues. Benefits of praying and speaking in tongues. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 2. For he that speaketh in a known tongue speaketh not unto men but Unto God, for no man understanded him. I'll be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. For he that speaketh in a known tongue speaketh not unto men, but Unto God, for no man understanded him. I'll be it in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. Number one, tongue speaking is a supernatural way of speaking to God directly. Tongue speaking is a supernatural way of speaking to God directly. So when we speak in tongues or pray in tongues, we are speaking to God directly. For he that speaketh in a known tongue, speaketh not unto me, but unto God. Speaketh unto God. Speaketh unto God. So God provided tongue speaking as a way of speaking to God directly. Of having fellowship with God directly. So when you're speaking in tongues, you are communicating to God. You are doing what? Communicating to God. And when you speak to God, you are going to receive answers in the physical realm. You speak in tongues, you speak to God directly, and God will answer you, and your results will be manifested in the physical realm. So there are things that you will never be able to tell God until you are able to speak in tongues. Hello? We have two wheels of prayer. Praying with the understanding on the best of the scriptures. But there is also the praying in tongues. When you are praying in tongues, the spirit of God within your spirit man gives you the utterance. That utterance is given to your spirit man. And then your spirit man prays. And that prayer comes out of your mouth in the form of tongues. Hello? When we are praying in the Holy Spirit, the initiator of that prayer is the Holy Ghost. Is who? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit will give your spirit man utterance. Your spirit man will pick the utterance and will pray. It. it will come out of your mouth. And the Bible says that is the right communication to God. And then he goes ahead to say, 
but unto God, for no man understandeth him. Albeit Ataibu. in the spirit, roho. he speaketh mysteries. Ana zile so siri. when you speak in tongues, you nimi. are in the spirit. Roho. When you speak in tongues, you are nimi. in the spirit. Uko roho. When you pray in tongues, you nimi. are in the spirit. Uko roho. And you are speaking Na to a spirit. Roho. For God is a spirit. Maana mungu ni roho. So when you pray omba in tongues, nimi. you are in the spirit realm. And you are speaking to God Una nena na who mungu is a spirit. Ni roho. So tongue speaking is nimi. a way Ninjia. of the spirit to spirit communication. Ya mausiliano kati ya roho na roho. Spirit to spirit communication. Spirit to spirit communication. The Holy Spirit initiates the groanings. It gives you the utterance. It gives the utterance to your spirit man. Your spirit man prays. It comes out of your mouth. And when you are praying in tongues, you are in the spirit. And you connect to your heavenly father who is a spirit. So tongue speaking is a spirit spirit to spirit communication. Your mind does not catch anything. Your understanding does not catch anything. It's a spirit to spirit communication. But the results will be manifested in the physical realm. So when we pray in tongues, it's a way to bring God supernaturally to intervene in your life. Tongue speaking, you are speaking to God directly and it's a way of bringing God to supernaturally intervene in your situation. Hello? Hello? In the spirit, Katika roho. he speaketh to God. Ana na mungu. He speaketh to God. Ana na mungu. And that is the perfect prayer. Na hiyo ndio the prayer initiated by the Holy Ghost is a perfect prayer. Kamili. Perfect prayer maombi kamilifu. that you communicate to God, na mungu. bringing God mungu. to intervene Ausike. in your situation, in the spirit realm, and kiro. in the physical realm. Na so, if you want to see God intervene in your life more mwako, than before, then you mbelini. need to pray in tongues. So, in the spirit, roho, he speak at mysteries. Anenena zile and when you pray in tongues, the nimi, devil cannot catch anything. It's a prayer that cannot be hindered. It's a perfect prayer. It's a spirit to spirit communication. There is no interruption. And that kind of prayer will bring God to intervene in your life supernaturally. Grace Nema. to make God ya mungu. intervene in your life supernaturally. Kiungu. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Kwa jina la Yesu. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Kwa jina la Yesu. Number two. Ya pili. Praying in tongues is a mystery Nisiri. that tackles mysterious circumstances and situations in your life. When you pray in tongues, is a mystery that tackles mysterious circumstances and situations in your life. The Bible says, verses 2, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him. Albeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. The word mysteries means he speaketh divine secrets. He takes divine secrets to handle mysterious situations. Sometimes we face mysterious situations. 
mysterious situations and we don't know how to tackle them and we don't know how to pray and we don't know what to pray and we don't know what, to and don't know what cause them that is the time to engage praying in tongues you pray mysteries to tackle mysterious situations so, when we pray in tongues, it is a mystery that tackles mysterious situations, mysterious circumstances. So, in life at times, we are faced with mysterious situations, circumstances. That is the time to speak mysteries, divine secrets, to tackle mysterious circumstances. Number four. When we pray in tongues, God gets more involved in your life. When you pray in tongues, God gets more involved in your life. Paul says, there are two avenues of prayer. 1 Corinthians 14, verses 15. What is it then? I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding also. I will sing with the spirit and I will sing with the understanding also. When you pray with the understanding, God gets involved in your life. But when you pray Ukiomba, in the spirit, roho, God Mungu, gets more involved in zaidi, your life. Zaidi if you are praying meomba, when the understanding only, yake, God will get involved. Mungu but at that level, you are praying with the understanding. But when you are praying in the spirit, roho, to praying in the understanding, God pia. will get more involved in your life. Mungu zaidi mwako. Remember, Umbuka. when you are praying with the understanding, you are only handling situations that you know how to pray about unas, them. But there are situations you don't know what ujui, to pray for as you ought. So when you pray ukiomba, in the spirit roho, and you are praying kuomba, in the understanding, ufahamu, God gets more involved in your life. Mungu Paul said, Paul I will sema, pray with the Spirit and I will pray with the understanding. So if you have been praying with the understanding, God gets involved. Mungu but at that level of praying in the understanding, but when you now add na praying in the Spirit, then God gets more involved Mungu zaidi basi in your life than before. So if you have been praying in the understanding, yes, God will get involved. But at that level of praying with the understanding, but if now you will add praying in the spirit to praying in the understanding, God will get more involved in your life than he was involved before. So when we pray Unapoomba in the spirit roho, and we pray uombe, in the understanding, ufahamu, God gets more involved in your life. Mungu zaidi mwako. So when you pray only in the understanding, tu you ufahamu, limit God. Mungu you do mipata. what? You limit God. When mipata. you pray with the understanding, ufahamu, you are in the physical realm. Your mind yako, is involved. It is in the physical realm. But kawaida. when you pray Ukiomba, in the spirit, you shift unayim. to the Hama, spirit realm. You shift Hama, to the spirit realm to have kiro. a direct, direct communication with God. Moja moja making God to get more involved in your life maishani than he was before. Paul said, I pray with tongues more than you all. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, 18. 
Paul said there, Paul anasema, I thank my God. Na mshukuru Mungu wangu. I speak with tongues na more nini. than ye all. Zaidi kuliko nyinyi wote. More than ye Oh. So one of the reasons for the exploits of Paul was speaking in tongues, praying in tongues. So when you pray in the understanding, God will get involved. But when you pray in the spirit, God gets more involved in your life. So when you are praying in tongues to your nimi, prayer life, God yako. gets more involved in your life than before. And that means Manisha. more supernatural happenings in the yungu. physical realm. The more God gets involved in your life, Zaidi Mungu the more results Zaidi you enjoy in the physical realm. The more God gets involved Zaidi Mungu in your life, mwako, the more easier your life becomes. Yako Hello? If God Mungu increases his involvement kwake, in your life, mwako, will your life remain the same? Yako no. Yako Results will change. Things that were hard will become kwa magu, easy. Inakuwa rahisi. So by praying kwa kuomba, in tongues, kandimi, you make God mungu, to get more involved in your life than before. And that means more supernatural happenings in the physical realm. God will kawaida. be seen more in your life. Mungu when you pray in the understanding, God is saying in your life. But when mwaku. you pray, Ukiomba, when you are praying in the spirit, ndimi, God will be more seen in your life. Mungu zaidi mwaku. As he entered after there, grace nema, to involve praying in tongues. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. When you don't speak in tongues, it does not mean that you will not go to heaven. But rather, but it means that you will miss a lot of things. God wants you to have that will enrich your lives on this earth. I'll repeat it again, write it down. When you don't speak in tongues, it does not mean that you will not go to heaven. But rather, Lakini, it means that manisha, you will miss a lot of things, a lot of blessings, zaidi, a lot of benefits zaidi, that God wants you to have upate, in this life haya, that will enrich your life in yako, this life. So when you don't pray in tongues, you will live a life that is far below the life that God expects you to live. When you don't pray in tongues, you will live a life that is far below the life that God wants you to live. The more God gets involved in your life, zaidi mungu the more mwako. blessings you will enjoy. Ndiyo zaidi the more zake. benefits of salvation you will enjoy. Ndiyo zaidi the more God gets involved in your life, zaidi mungu the mwako. easier your life will become. Ndiyo yako raisi zaidi. Number four, benefit. Faida ya nne. Praying in tongues helps you to reach the destination that God has prepared for you. Praying in tongues helps you to reach the destination that God has prepared for you. When you pray in the spirit, roho, you make spiritual progress which will produce physical progress in the kawaida, physical realm. Now God has given to us Two wheels of prayer. Praying in the understanding and praying in the spirit. 
Those are two wheels. When you only pray in the understanding, you are using one wheel to reach your destination. It will be rough, it will be slow, and it will be hard. I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in the understanding to fulfill my destiny. I will pray in the spirit. I will pray in the understanding to reach my destination. That is a two-wheel prayer in arriving at your destination. When you try to ride a two-wheel bicycle by using what wheel, it will be rough, it will be slow, and you may never reach your destination. So God has given to us the two-wheel prayer. Pray in the understanding. Pray in the, pray in the spirit so that it can propel you to your destiny so that you can make progress into the fulfillment of your destiny. When you pray in the understanding, you will make progress, but the progress will be slow. It will be slow. You riding a two bicycle, you riding a two wheel bicycle, using one wheel. It will be slow. And it will be rough. And it will be hard. So God has given to us two wheel of prayer. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the understanding. Why? So that when you pray in the spirit and you pray in the understanding, it will propel you into the fulfillment of your destiny. The two wheels of prayer will propel your life forward and produces long-lasting results. So when you pray with the understanding only, you won't make much progress in life the way you ought to make. You may think you are moving forward, but compared to the destination that God intended for you to reach, you haven't gotten very far at all. God did not design you to fulfill your destiny with one will. One will you will make progress. But slow. But slow. And hard. And rough. And you may think you are making much progress. But according to the plan of God, you haven't gone far at all. So you need a two-wheel prayer. Pray in the understanding. Pray in the spirit to gain speed, to go forward, for God to get more involved in your life, for you to reach your destination. The more God gets involved in your life, the faster you go, into the fulfillment of your destiny. Having more of God means having speed in life. The more God is involved in your life, the, the faster you reach your destination. So if you're only praying in the understanding and you're not praying in the spirit, yes, you will make some progress. But according to the plan of God, you will be where you're not supposed to be. So for you to be where you're supposed to be in the calendar of God, you need to pray in the understanding and you need to pray in the spirit. Paul said, Paul I pray with tongues, not a new all. Paul came last. What made him to go ahead? One of the secrets of Paul is praying in tongues. He said, all of you, I pray more than all of you in tongues. So, 
Praying in the spirit helps you to reach the destination that God has prepared for you. That is why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 14, 15, I will pray with the spirit and I will pray with the understanding. Grace to pay the price of praying in the spirit, praying in understanding. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Number five. Praying in tongues helps you to pray for what you don't know. What to pray for as you ought to pray. When you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit helps you to pray for that which you don't know what to pray for as you ought. You know when we pray for our children, Pray for ourselves in understanding. We are praying, but we are limited. We are what? Limited. For the best in our lives to come out, we must be able to pray in the spirit. God's best in your life. God's best in your children. God's best in your career will never come out until you engage praying in the spirit. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 26. Are you there? Let's read. Romans 8, 26. 1, 2, 3, let's go. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we shall pray for as we ought. We know not what we shall pray for as we ought. Concerning our lives, our marriage, our businesses, our careers, our children, our nation. We know not what we shall pray for as we ought. Why don't we know what to pray for as we ought? Number one, we don't know the future unless God shows you. But the Holy Spirit knows. We don't know the future unless God shows you. You don't know what will happen in the year 2021 unless God shows you but the spirit of God knows everything that will happen in the year 2021 we know not we know not what to pray for as we ought. As what? As we ought. We know not what we should pray for as we ought. If we knew what will happen the all of the year 2021, we will know what to pray for. If we knew in the year 2019 that this virus will originate from China. We will know how to pray. The Holy Spirit knew it will come. But we didn't know. We didn't know. So we don't know what to pray for as we ought. Why don't we know? Because we don't know the future unless God shows us. But the Spirit of God knows all things. Number two. Why don't we know what we should pray for as we ought? Number two, sometimes we don't know and we don't know the underlying conditions that are causing the problems in the spirit realm. 
Sometimes we don't know the underlying conditions that are causing the problems in the spirit realm. Sometimes you open a door and you don't know you open a door. You open a door to the devil and you don't know you open the door. And so things are happening and you don't know what to pray for as you ought. You don't know the underlying conditions that are causing the problems in the spirit realm. So we pray in the spirit. Why? So that the Holy Spirit can help us to pray the way we ought to pray to handle situations that we don't know how to handle in the physical realm. So the Bible says there, likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. What is our infirmities here? The word infirmities means our weaknesses, our shortcomings. No, shortcomings. Our shortcomings. What, has, what is our shortcomings? I told you, number one, you don't know the future unless God shows you, but the Spirit of God knows what is our shortcomings. We don't know the underlying conditions that are producing the problems we are facing in life. So what we do, Holy Spirit of God, I don't know what to pray for as I ought to pray. Holy Spirit of God, you know all things. You know all things. Holy Spirit of God, hold together with me and let's pray for this situation. So our infirmities is our weaknesses, is our shortcomings. The word help it. Likewise, the Spirit also help it. Our infirmities help it. The word help it means to hold together with you against that situation. The Holy Spirit holds together with you against that situation. He holds together with you to tackle the problem. He holds together with you to tackle the situation. He holds together with you in order to end the crisis. Remember, he knows all things. So he will give you utterance in your spirit mind. Your spirit man will pray. When you pray in tongues, it is your spirit man pray. And that utterance comes out of your mouth. So the Holy Spirit holds together with us against the situation. Likewise, the spirit also holds together with us. He helps us our infirmities. He holds together with us against the situation. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. The Spirit of God gives you the utterance. And then your spirit man prays that utterance. Then it comes out of your mouth. Verses 27. He that such it, the hearts, know it what is the mind of the spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. When you are praying in tongues, you are praying the perfect will of God to tackle that situation. And we know that all things work together for good. All things are turned around for good to them that love God, to them that 
a call according to his purpose. When you pray in tongues, all the things you are praying in tongues will work out for your goal in the physical realm. Hello? Is this thing entering? Let me give an example. Maybe you want to pray for your children. Okay. Write down. It will help you. You want to pray for a certain situation. This is how to do it. Spirit of God. I don't know what to pray for about my children, my husband, finances, feather, Marriage, Noah, business, yashara, family, familia, ministry, uduma, as I ought. So please, Vodafadali, Holy Spirit of God, help me nisaidie, to pray kuomba, the perfect will of God concerning this. Usu hali hi. And then, Kisha, now begin to pray. Kuomba I'll repeat again. Arudia tena. Spirit of God, Roa mungu, I don't know what to pray for about my children, my husband, finances, marriage, business, family, ministry, as I ought. So please, Holy Spirit of God, help me to pray the perfect will of God concerning these matters. And then you now pray in the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit of God, I don't know what to pray for as I ought concerning this, my child. Holy Spirit of God, you know all things. Help me hold together with me. Let's pray for this child. Let's pray for this child. And then you begin to pray. Asake, letuka shankota, Libro poloto, asakata ikalande, eteme shekete, libro poloto, sankita malande, alosi katoya bashanda, libro pobote, lakataya koshake, elese meture balando, at kalando no, seketele meture bayate. You prayed in the understanding, but you are limited. There is something you need to touch for that child to change. And you don't know what you need to touch. The Holy Spirit knows the area to touch for the child to change. We don't know what we shall pray for as we ought. Holy Spirit of God, there is a shake-up in this workplace. I don't know what I shall pray for as I ought. But Holy Spirit, you know the root of the problem. You know it's causing the trouble. Holy Spirit, let's pray for this turbulence to end. In Jesus' name, Ete keshe ke lipe promoso ataka ya kolende libron polotunde alasi makoto ya kosheke libron polote la kota you pray you pray that you I want you to turn into prayer people that will do serious prayers to change your life. This prayer you pray for 15 minutes, stop it. Go 30 minutes in tongues. Go one hour in tongues. You do casual things. They will give you casual results. But you do serious stuff. They will give you serious results. Not that you pray for, you have not even prayed for one minute. And then you check, you check your, you check your watch. It's only one minute. One minute. And you want unique results. Pray. You pray. You pray on your knees. When you are tired, you wake up. Ashenta, leketeri botondo, elese metune, lipopo, halisha kayoka, letemo sende. Eterike Tereko, Sankita Malonde, Lipopo, Takeshe Ke, Lipopolose, Katuya Bashane, 
the Holy Spirit is helping you to pray the perfect will of God. That situation will turn around. He helps us. For we don't know what to pray for as we ought. But when he helps us, all things we are praying for in the Holy Ghost will work out together for what? For your good. So praying in tongues turns situations around. All the things you are praying in the Holy Ghost will work out together for what? For your good. So when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you turn situations around in the spiritual realm. For you to turn situations around in the physical realm. When you pray in tongues, you go into the spirit realm to turn situations around. For you to turn situations around in the physical realm. Thirty minutes. Ikazaladini. Lati. Lako sete. Ete keshi. Linto mo papa. Kati kalandana. Elese kete. Shiki lendo. Andi makaka. Alasi kakaya. He shekete. Lipopolo te. Thirty minutes. Ikazaladini. Stop doing casual prayers. You will remain a casual believer with casual results. It's time for you to go deep. To go what? Deep. You don't catch wells in shallow water. You that is doing five minutes, you are too shallow. You will only catch frog. And third balls. But if you want to catch heavy, you, you go deep. deep. Go deep. You've been in the shallow for too long. Leave the shallow. Go to the deep to command unique results. Will you go to the deep? After you are through with praying in understanding, Heavenly Father, you said this year, you will multiply me a thousand times. Go ahead, multiply me a thousand times. According to Isaiah 60 22, Holy Spirit of God, I don't know what to pray for. As I ought to pray concerning this a thousand times multiplication. By you, you know, I want this year my life to multiply a thousand times. All together with with me. And let's pray for this to be fulfilled. Elese metunde libro poloto asakati mashanda lekoto liketunde elese meture bayande apply two wheels in order to turn situations around. That problem will remain the same. Because you don't know what you should pray for. As you ought, you don't know. So you can't tackle the situation in the physical realm. You can't tackle the situation with the prayer of understanding. It's now time to shift to the spirit realm to tackle that situation by praying in the Holy Ghost. That means, if you are not praying in the Holy Spirit, there are situations in your life that will never turn. Why? You don't know what to pray for as you ought. So they remain there with you. From January to December, they remain there with you. Ten years, they remain there with you. Why? You don't know what you should pray for as you ought. So you don't know how to tackle the situation. So so the situations will not be tackled. So the situation will remain there. Or the situation will get worse. From today, grace to pray in the Holy Ghost. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. And lastly, for today, Praying in tongues helps you to enter into God's perfect will for your life. Praying in tongues helps you to enter into God's perfect will for your life. If you only pray in the understanding, then 
you may end up with the acceptable will of God and not the perfect will of God. It takes the two wheels to arrive at the perfect will of God. If you're only praying the understanding, you may end up in the acceptable will of God. Romans 827 says, He does search the hearts know it what is the mind of the spirit. Because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. God, according to the perfect will of God. So, praying in the Holy Ghost will take you to the perfect will of God. Romans 12, 2, lastly. Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that goal, acceptable and perfect will of God. So there is the good will of God, the acceptable will of God, and the perfect will of God for you to enter into God's perfect will of God. You need to invoke the Holy Spirit to help you to pray. If you only pray in the understanding, you may end up at the acceptable will of God. Acceptable will of God. But the Holy Spirit of God may get intercession for you according to the perfect will of God. So praying in tongues helps you to enter into the perfect will of God. Hello? It takes hard work to receive God's best. Grace to employ the two levels of prayer. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare to you now, receive a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost now in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost now in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost now in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we package our offerings, our tithes, our sacrifices, whatever you brought to worship the Lord? We give them to Jesus Christ. Who is our milk is If you need an envelope, lift up your right hand. Asha should be able to assist you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's be on our feet in the name of Jesus Christ. Asha's there are still people in front here who need envelopes in the name of Jesus Christ. Now speak to your offering. Speak to your offering, Holy Spirit of God. Thank you for giving me the privilege to give. Jesus Christ, receive our offerings in tithes. Use them to worship the Father in heaven. Even the Father, receive them in heaven. Bless us, your people. Open the windows of heaven of our lives. Bless us, your people. Make us a peculiar people. Lift us above the nations of the earth. Rebuke the devourer for sex. Cause the forces of the Gentiles to flow in to our lives in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Grace to apply that which you have learned. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. May the Lord go with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Exodus 12 13. I decree the blood of Jesus cover over your lives families, properties, homes, houses, all that concern you in the name of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Jesus cover, I command every evil, every plague, every destroyer to stay away from every area of your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalms 121, 7 to 8, whatever journey that you ever make, you're going out, you're coming in, is guaranteed in the name of Jesus Christ. Psalms 91 7. 
that which kills thousands, tens of thousands in the world. It will never come near you, your family, or your property. In the name of Jesus Christ, Isaiah 54, 50, every council of hell that has gathered against you, your family, I caused them to fall down for your sake, never to rise up. In the name of Jesus Christ, Isaiah 54, 17, all the weapons, the wars, satanic occult extends and arrows fashioned against you, your family, none of them will prosper. In the name of Jesus Christ, peace in every area of your lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Shall we our feet as we share the goodness together? Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall join the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. Peace. I'll fulfill my days. My family will fulfill their days. I am the blessed of the Lord. I am uncursable in the affairs of life. I have given. I am abundantly supplied. All my bills, all my debts are supernaturally paid. I'm kept by the power of God. In my part of this life, and there is no death. I have favor with God. And I have favor with men. Open heavens, open doors is my portion. I live even on earth. By the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Healing belongs to me. I have my liberty in Christ Jesus. With long life, will God satisfy me? I abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I have made God my refuge and my fortress by my God I'm exempted from all evil only God's goodness and abundance will pursue me and my family for the rest of the year and my God has turned my life around into a wonder